when women believe that marriage is hard, they put in so much effort. Someone benefits from that. And in this case, a lot of people are benefiting from it. A lot of abusive men are benefiting. Let's change this from marriage is supposed to be hard to abusive marriages are really, really hard. Hey guys, so today I want to talk about another topic that I've touched on before. And that is how the narrative that marriage is hard is used to further gaslight women into normalizing abuse in marriages. The narrative that marriage is hard subtly places the responsibility on women to make it work. It's implied that women need to manage emotions, compromise, and adapt more to keep the relationship stable. Because God forbid that be a man's task. This expectation can be traced back to the idea that women are more naturally nurturing and adaptable. When they say that marriage is hard work, whose hard work do you think that they're implying? Because the result of this is that women end up feeling responsible for a marriage's success or failure and discouraged from vocalizing needs and standing up to unfair dynamics. Historically, women are often seen as the primary caretakers of the home and family, expected to manage not only household tasks, but also emotional well-being of their spouses and children. This emotional labor, which includes activities like remembering family birthdays and generally ensuring harmony at home, is something that women have been socialized to feel responsible for. With even our simplest wants and needs, minimized by spouses who can't even do the basics. For example, a new internet trend popped up this week where women are tasked with asking their spouse to make them a cup of coffee just to see how they'll respond. Now, in the main video that's going viral, the husband decides that he's going to pick a fight with the wife and ask what he's going to get in exchange. Will you make me a coffee? Are you crazy? For real, I'm really about to fall asleep. Okay. Is this like a a back and forth thing? Because last night... It's a simple night... question. I just ask, will you make me coffee? I never ask you to make me coffee. If you keep on getting an attitude, you could do something with that, too. No, you act like it has to be an exchange. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's always one-sided. Would you make me a coffee? Right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> Why? You make your own fucking coffee. <laughs> what? But a lot of people posted the same challenge where their spouses got up immediately, even asking them what kind they wanted. Okay, did y'all see that video of the wife asking her husband to make her coffee and he verbally annihilated her instead? I was gonna make a video response to that, but then I remembered I had B-roll of me reading and then my husband randomly bringing me coffee one morning without me even asking and I, I felt like this was a better response. And I love it when trends like this hit the internet because it highlights the drastic differences and treatment that a lot of women get in their marriages. And for the women who aren't being treated well, it shows how things could and should be. So is marriage supposed to be hard? Let's think about it this way. Is your relationship with your best friend hard? For my married women, let's play out this scenario. Think about a time you took your kids to the pool and it was a disaster. Kids are crying, dad's not helping, and you have a lot of resentment for him because he's not making the situation easier but you're really trying to be patient and calm and remembering what you read about some marriage self-help book. But everyone's hungry and you're trying really hard to get another layer of sunscreen put on. And one of the kids is drowning and you're trying to get dad to help, but he's ignoring you and you're carrying all the bags. Just thinking to yourself, why did I even do this? No one's happy. And in the car, he's giving you the silent treatment until you get home when everything blows up into a fight. He storms out of the house and you're thinking to yourself, I don't ever want to do that again. This is horrible. So think about that versus if you go to the pool with your best friend and her kids. Now there's double the amount of kids and little annoying things happen like you forget the snacks and it becomes really funny instead of your husband blowing up at you because you had to go buy snacks. And you just laugh because, you know, things happen. And your friend keeps reminding you that you look so beautiful even though you feel insecure in your swimming suit because you just had a baby and you aren't feeling your body right now. But she just keeps telling you over and over how amazing you look and how much she loves you. And everything's okay because everyone has sunscreen on and nobody's drowning. Because you're both in this together and you're both watching your children, laughing, having a great time. And the kids feel loved and like they're getting enough attention. And it's just a wonderful experience overall. There is no undercurrent of stress when you get home. And you end up feeling better about yourself because your relationship with your best friend is stronger than ever. But isn't your husband supposed to be your best friend? And isn't he also a parent to your children? And this is why it needs to be changed from marriage is hard to abusive marriage is really, really hard. And a lot of abusive tactics in marriages like weaponized incompetence and women taking on all of the emotional labor is normalized in our culture. 
marriage should actually be the most wonderful relationship in the world because it's supposed to be a partnership, a power dynamic, where together you're able to accomplish much more than you ever could alone. And yet, because of this abusiveness of the power over dynamic, where men are in secret competition with their partners, it ends up being this kind of scenario all the time. When I was getting married, everybody was telling me, marriage is the hardest thing you'll ever do. And I was like, thank you? What a weird thing to say to somebody on their wedding day. But also, listen, I am part of this is that man. I am. And we share everything. I'm not in charge of this place. I'm not the household manager. This guy does the grocery list. He goes shopping. He notices when we're out or something. Wipes down the sink. Takes out the trash. He's thinking. He's helping. And frankly, not even just the stuff that's important. Like, he just came over here with a plate full of brie and jam and crackers and a little ramekin full of cheesy popcorn. And he made me peppermint tea with a little creamer in it. And you know what? It wasn't because I asked. If that is not the kind of partnership you're getting, you're not getting love. And if that ain't the kind of love you're getting, dump him. So who benefits from this mass gaslighting of women that marriage is hard? Let's just start with the financial end. Think about the slews of professional industries, marriage and family therapists, sex therapists, paid clergy members whose living is based on women who put in all of this emotional labor and invest in so much time into therapy to fix their marriages. All of the relationship self-help books that you purchased over time. Even legal services present marriages challenging to position their services as essential. But obviously, the person that benefits the most from women being conditioned that marriage is hard is the abusive husband. Why? Because if you make women believe that marriage is hard, women put in so much effort, effort into making their homes nice, more work in the sexual intimacy arena, even in instances when sexual betrayal and sexual coercion is present. Women put most of, if not all, of the emotional labor into relationships. And the one time he loads the dishwasher, he wants a parade. Well, that's my dad. And God forbid that he doesn't get that parade because it's another fight. Someone always benefits from gaslighting. There's a purpose behind it. And in this case, it's a lot of abusive men. Good men exist. Emotionally intelligent, responsible men that when they see something that needs to be done around the house, they just do it because they're also a caretaker of the family and they eat off the same dishes that you're cleaning. There are a lot of men who view their wives as equals. When I was pregnant, I made the mistake of asking people what to expect as a mom. I was 24 years old, expecting my first kid, newlywed, excited. The number one comment I kept getting was, prepare to never sleep again. Prepare to never have time to yourself again. Prepare to always be tired. Your life as you know it is over. Half the women I would talk to would say something like, oh, what I would do to just sleep in until this time. What I would do to get up and do something I love. What I would do to have time to myself. And I was terrified. I truly believed my life was going to be over the second I had this baby. No one shared with me anything positive about the future I could have as a mom. And when I mentioned I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, oh my gosh, the comments got absolutely worse. Mind you, these were all married women I was asking this question. And when I would say something like, oh, well, what about you and the dad kick churns? Like one morning you sleep, oh, they would laugh in my face. Like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Fast forward four years later, I am now a mom to four and under. It is Wednesday morning. I am in bed. I woke up at 9 a.m. I woke up to coffee on my bedside. Breakfast was brought to me upstairs. I slept in and I am currently planning on spending my morning in bed. And no, it's not Mother's Day. It's not a special occasion or anything of that sort. My husband just knew I was tired yesterday. And since he's home today, he decided he's just going to take over and I'm going to sleep in. I say all that to say. Having kids isn't what makes it impossible for you to have a life outside of motherhood. I think sometimes it's the partners. It's the partners that we be choosing. I can confidently say having kids did not stop my life. Having kids did not stop me from doing things I love, going out as I please, being spontaneous with my time, enjoying my partner, enjoying myself, trying new things. And of course, sleeping in. <laughs> 